The Olden World Written by Tsar Yoshi Chapter 38 Technology The entrance to Ehrenbite's house was on the second floor. As Starlight slowly descended the stairs to the first, however, it felt much closer to a basement. There was more metal present than she had seen in all of Riverfall so far combined, and it was twisted into shapes and constructs she couldn't even begin to trace the purpose of. Pipes hung from the ceiling, and every permanent surface was covered in trails of glowing geometric conduits that pulsed with ethereal light. Walkable floor space was limited to tight walkways, with bulky wooden tables higher than her line of sight taking up every available inch and then some. Under the tables were an endless sea of crates, boxes, and other storage devices, some covered in sheets and others simply open-top bins. Completely lost and confused, Starlight settled for following the stallion as he confidently navigated a maze, vaguely aware that Amber had followed her inside. They turned several times until suddenly, abruptly, the walls fell away. Starlight blinked at the openness. She was standing on a slightly raised circular dais, inscribed with more runes and glowing etches leading up to a higher pedestal in the middle. Suspended in the air high above was a mesh of what looked vaguely like rails, twisting about in a cloud of metal but never quite intersecting, hung from barely visible crystalline supports. Nearby, a stack of glowing towers seemed to feed into it. Just takes your breath away, don't it? Irambai asked, using the central pedestal as a stool. I've spent the better part of seven years building this one, based on some research by an old colleague. How do you like it? Starlight was completely nonplussed. What is it? Well, Irambai gestured up at the nest of metal rails. This one here is supposed to be a long-distance teleporter, at least in theory. But it's more of a proof of concept for more cutting-edge technology. He raised an eyebrow at Starlight. How much do you know about Manatech, kid? Truthfully, Starlight answered, Nothing. Ah, Aaronby growled. Shame that. And you probably wouldn't be able to appreciate the intricacies even if I told you. Of course, if you're looking for something to do here and you've got time to make vanish, you could always learn. Say... How good are you with that horn of yours? Starlight winced. I heard it getting here. I don't want to use it yet. Shame for that, too. Ambi got up, pacing in a circle around the center. How'd it happen? Trip and bang it on the rock? He moved to a clear table at the edge of the dais and began rummaging. Overtaxed myself on a spell, Starlight muttered, hanging her head. She considered trying to deceive him since the last thing she wanted was another unicorn telling her there was something wrong with her horn. She was here to stop sulking, not be told she was defective. Over taxation? And it's still bothering you now? Ambi looked back over his shoulder. That must have been quite the spell that took you out. What all you could do back when it worked? Charlie shrugged. Levitate, light stuff up, normal things, make crystals appear. Making crystals appear? Everybody's eyebrows both rose and he grinned. Huh. Sounds to me like you were quite the magical prodigy. I bet you'd learn quickly if there was anything you wanted me to teach you. He picked up what looked like a helmet with one end cut off, spinning it on one hoof. Any spells you like to learn? Teleportation, perhaps? Transfiguration? How to fly? How to fly? Starley's eyes nearly bulged. Unicorns can't do that, only Pegasi can. Is that so? Ehrenby's lip twitched. Tell me, have you ever seen a Pegasus? Starlight nodded and Amber shook her head. Heh. <laughs> Ehrenby swung a hoof, nodding at Amber. I hardly blame you. Those winged goofballs hardly come around these parts anymore. But the important part is, they look like he took a normal pony and stuck a pair of flappers on just to make them cuter or more huggable. He raised an eyebrow upon seeing the expressions he was getting. Sure, go tell that to the town. Me having a finger of Pegasi would make a fantastic rumor. I can't wait to see how they manage to take it too seriously. Now, where was I? Have we seen a Pegasus? Amber helpfully interjected. Right, right, I knew that. Aaron by loudly muttered. 
Point is, they're about the least aerodynamic things you could imagine, and their wings are tiny compared to the side of their bodies. Ever wonder how those things stay in the air? He grinned triumphantly. Magic. Same as unicorns have magic in their horns, and nerf ponies have whatever it is you nerf ponies do. The way I see it is, how different can two kinds of magic be? Starlight scuffed at the ground. She could guess where Embry was going, but something about messing with a pony's personal magic sat uneasily with her. It felt too similar to forcibly changing who they were. Plenty different, it turns out, Embry growled, distracting her from her thoughts. Mana is the basis for all magical technology society has ever built. It's like an energy form produced in unicorn horns and a few other ways. Anyone who learns a simple spell can push it out and trap it in a gemstone where it can be used for all sorts of stuff. Heating, sending signals and information, making giant engines for boats and ships. But real ponies can effortlessly do things like telekinesis and flight that we can't even begin to approximate with man attack. It's always been as if there was something missing. He hefted a helmet and offered it to Amber. And I might just be on the right track to figuring out what that something is. Care for a little demonstration, miss? If it's what you make it sound like, Amber said, licking her lips, I'm beyond game. And it's Amber, by the way. I'm pretty sure we've met. I knew that. Amber waved it closer. So, little filly, I'll just need you to lift her. Any way you like will do, as long as it's off the ground. Just to get a sense for how heavy she is. And I'm Starlight. Starlight mumbled, moving towards Amber and trying to slide under her, hoisting with her back the way Amber had lifted her earlier. Amber was fairly small for a grown mare, so she didn't have trouble getting the required height, especially when the earth pony spread her limbs out, putting her entire weight on Starlight's back. The filly wheezed, but stood strong without shaking. I knew that too, Aaron by growled. Anyway, if you got it, then put her down. Amber, come here and wear this. He held out a helmet which was connected to the glowing towers with a set of heavy wires. It goes on your butt, by the way. What? Amber took it, blinking bemusedly and holding it to her behind. Why there? Amber shrugged. Don't ask me who dec Don't ask me who decided where Pony's branch should appear. But they're somehow involved, so the closer this gets, the bigger the effect is. Uh, let's see now. Seeing that Amber had a helmet properly fitted, he turned back to a control panel next to the towers and made some adjustments. Starlight! He turned back to them, watching eagerly. Try to lift her again. I don't feel anything, Amber said uncertainly, but still stretched for Starlight to lift her. The filly held her up, thinking. It didn't really feel that much different from last time, but now that there was a metal helmet on her, she should probably feel noticeably heavier. Instead, if anything, she felt slightly lighter, about the difference that would be made by her being hungry instead of just after a good meal. She blinked several times. I guess she's lighter? Maybe? Ha! There you have it, then. How many times have you seen an earth pony do that? And by a move to turn the machines off, adding, You can set her down now. It's not like she'll up and float away or anything. What happened? Amber asked bemusedly, taking off the helmet and hoofing it to Ernby. Technology happened, he replied with a grin. Well, it will happen, eventually. Unfortunately, it's fairly useless right now, but still around a hundred times better than anything anyone else has ever made. This thing's powered purely by you and not anything else. Maybe after enough years, I'll get it efficient enough that you can fly for real. He turned to Starlight, adding, Sound interesting yet? You said there was no way out of this place, Starlight answered, changing the subject. So why do you have a giant teleporter? Proof of concept, mostly, Ernby said with a shrug, running a hoof along the central pedestal. I want to make this work with as much natural pony magic as possible. It can do telekinesis, too, at about enough strength to levitate a tissue. As for getting out of the village, it doesn't have that long of a range. Maybe with half the population of Riverfall powering it, it could get you to Iron Ridge, but there's nowhere out there for a much bigger distance past that. He leaned in, adding, Care to know a secret? Okay. 
The stallion was rambling so much, Starlight didn't see much point in giving him permission to continue, but did it anyway. After all, it probably couldn't hurt to know more about this. What I'd really like to go with this thing, he sucked in a breath, looking wistfully upwards, is to get on top of those big cliffs everyone thinks are the edge of the world. It's definitely good enough to do that, I think. Only issue is where to go from there. And, once you were done, how to get back down. I actually had a talented seamstress offer to make me a parachute once. He sighed, still gazing into the distance. Never found out if that was ever going to happen. Just a dream, I guess. Starlight held her tongue. It very well could have been accidental, but she was getting the uncomfortable feeling back that he knew where she was from and was baiting her to talk about it. While she was thinking, and by shot or glance, Is any of this hooking you, kid? Starlight shrugged. It's nice, she answered, truthfully adding, But I don't get it. Well, Arambai hitched himself up, straightening and stretching as if he was preparing to leave and return upstairs. If you ever find yourself needing something to do, I can guarantee you you can sink more hours into this work than you'd otherwise know what to do with. I think you'd be a good learner, and I'd be happy to teach you. And if you'd rather be in it for the reward... He narrowed his eyes conspiratorially. Who knows? Maybe you'd be around when this gets to the point where you could carry everything you need to make it work on your back in a suit of armor. Ember brightened, shivering slightly. That sounds like something straight out of a story. Well, what's the use in having technology if you don't make it interesting? Ember chuckled slightly. For real, though. This is too new to me to have any idea what it could lead to. Anything could happen, absolutely anything. And you'd be there when it does. I'll think about it, Starlight finally answered, shuffling near to Amber. So, old stallion, Amber poked at some of the supplies laying nearby that weren't part of his flying machine. What else do you have down here? Heh, <laughs> I'm glad you asked. End of chapter 38